Good evening and welcome to Monday Night on Thames, where at 7.30 there's fatherly worries for Jim and Jack in Coronation Street. It's right after Cluedo. You are invited to a murder. A stranger lies dead in Arlington Grange. There are six suspects, but which one is the killer? Could it be Mrs. Peacock, Lady of the Manor and beautiful society hostess? Perhaps Colonel Mustard, military hero and intimate family friend? Is Reverend Green a saint or sinner? Is it Professor Plum, a man with a degree of suspicion? Miss Scarlet, Mrs. Peacock's glamorous stepdaughter? Or Mrs. White, loyal housekeeper and devoted confidant? And here is your host for Pluto, Richard Maley. Thank you, good evening, and welcome to Cluedo, where we're about to conduct a murder investigation and track down a killer. Now, if you think you've got what it takes to be a successful sleuth, then you can prove it in the next half hour as you try and unravel the mystery of a murder at Arlington Grange. And you can pit your wits against our celebrity studio detectives who are, from TVAM, newsreader Lisa Aziz, and from The Bill, Detective Constable Tosh Lyons, Kevin Lloyd. Hello. And here to challenge them, we have children's television presenter Jenny Powell and Daily Mail society columnist Nigel Dempster. <laughs> and uh, good luck to both teams tonight. Now, Cluedo, of course, tests your powers of logic and deduction. You have to work out who committed the murder, with which weapon, and in which room. And at the end of tonight's programme, there'll be an extra bonus for viewers at home. There's a chance to win a thrilling murder mystery weekend if you can answer a very simple question based on tonight's case. So please concentrate very hard on all the evidence that you're going to be seeing, starting with these important early clues. Now, we do know that the murder was committed with one of these six weapons. Was it the knife, the billiard cue, the curtain cord, the insecticide, the carving fork, or the gun? I can also reveal that the murder was committed in one of these six rooms. Was it the dining room, the drawing room, the billiard room, the library, the kitchen, or was it the study? All right, let's now examine the crucial evidence so far, the events leading up to the murder itself. Mrs. Peacock is playing host to a journalist who's promised to write an article that will make Arlington Grange extremely famous. <laughs> How I loathe journalists. <laughs> well, I couldn't be expected to turn down an article about Arlington Grange and country ways. You were the envy of half the county. Mm -hmm. Where the devil is the man? Oh, Mr. Stringer. I do hope you haven't been hanging about for me. So, Mr. Stringer, you're a society hack. Who's well with whom and all that? That's me. I do my own picks, too. Very lucrative. Mrs. Peacock, to your lovely house and to our collaboration. Mrs. Peacock, that man Stringer. Not now, Mrs. White. No, thank you. <laughs> You're not usually so standoffish from what I've heard and seen. What exactly do you mean? Holiday snaps. <laughs> Got the neg, of course. What exactly do you want? You'll find out later. You know where my room is? Mm -hmm. Don't bring that. You might do a chap an injury. No scientific proof, only fake. God does not exist. Finish. Mm. Gentlemen, I love a discussion of the issues. Ethical problems. I'll tell you what, before I thrash the Colonel at snooker, how about a different game? You'll love it. What game, Mr. Stringer? I pose a problem, you give the right ethical answer. 
Easy one first. Yours, Colonel. Go on. Gulf War. Undercover operation goes very wrong. Six of our non-existent chaps, all sten guns and balaclavas, get taken alive. Delivered back to our own HQ, missing parts and mercifully dead. So war's not very pretty. The CO who cocked it up and covered it up gets a gong. Now, is that right, ethically, Colonel? How about a scientific one? A company sells something that kills the people who use it, yet it was verified harmless by an eminent scientist. Now, is that scientist guilty of murder or the company who sold it? Hey, Doc? You're here to write about the Grange. I suggest you do that and leave the house guests alone. Just something to think about, Doc. Give you a game later. 10.15, right, Colonel? A photograph? Well, what does he want? Or need I ask? Well, let's put it this way. He doesn't write for country ways. He's from the gutter press. And if you don't cooperate? You've got a nerve. Do you want me to tell the story, or...? Or I pay you to keep quiet? I die first. Like your six soldiers. I've killed better men than you with my bare hands. Everybody has a price, of course. Naughty. Charlie, it's a great story. Country house, sex, military scandal, mad professor, arsonist, and a tart. All I need is the dirt on the rev green of this parish, and I'm home and dry. Dig what you can for me. Bye. Aha! Start the day with the hair of the dog. Mmm. Nice drop. Funny finding you here. Don't know what you mean. Your former mistress died in that fire. Arson, wasn't it? I was court reporter. I was innocent. <laughs> That's what the police thought. Mrs. Peacock know about the fire, does she? Insured, is she? I was innocent. Of course you were. Still, you know what they say, don't you? Eh? There's no smoke without fire. Oh, I'm sorry. Tactless of me. Everybody at church. Except the professor. He doesn't believe. Does the vicar? I beg your pardon. A bit of a gambler, I hear. Up to his ears at the bookies. Do you take delight in upsetting people, Mr. Stringer? Liars and scandalmongers have made his life hell in the past. Now, now, calm down. I've heard something else about the Reverend and his, uh, shall I say, penchant for the mature ladies of this parish. Wouldn't want that little story to get out now, would we? <laughs> Journalists are an evil in the world, Mrs. White. He's determined to make trouble. You have to worry, my dear. Perhaps he won't be with us much longer. Cheers for now. Doc, fancy a drink? We can have a chat about research and United Agriculture. Why, you've already made up your mind. Oh, sure. I've got an expert who'll say you recommended unsafe product. Mad Prof kills 30,000. It's a nice headline. What was it, a compound of arsenic and dioxin? You, you wouldn't dare to print lies. <laughs> See you at lunch, Doc. Was it? And what, may I ask, do you want? How about Wild Widow Tells All to the Sunday Papers? But I wouldn't. Oh, I would. 
juicy stuff if I write it. 10,000 not Think about it while I call my editor. Well, the journalist certainly found a sensational story, murder at Arlington Grange, his own, and a scoop that he'll never report. But who killed David Stringer? Only two people in this studio know that. I'm one of them, and the other, of course, is the murderer, who is one of these six suspects. Was it Colonel Mustard to hide his Gulf War guilt? Mrs. Peacock feared a scandal, but could she kill? Did Miss Scarlet prove a fatal attraction? Did Mrs. White have a burning desire to bury the past? Did the Reverend Green take a gamble and silent stringer? Or did Professor Plum stop at nothing to stop the press? So there they are. Our six suspects, six possible murder weapons, and of course, six possible rooms. So, studio detectives, based on the evidence that you've heard so far, I want your gut reactions as to what the weapon was, where it happened, and, of course, who the killer is. Over to you, Lisa. OK, well, our gut reaction, we think that the murder happened in the kitchen, mm -hmm. we think the murder weapon was the paper knife, and we think the murderer is Miss Scarlet. Scarlet? No! <laughs> <laughs> this is all right, all right, calm, this, calm yourself, calm yourself, <laughs> because uh, we've got a long way to go, but I want to move on to a second gut reaction now from Jenny and Nigel. Well, now that everyone knows how we gossip on this earn our living, yeah. we think it happened in the kitchen. Yes, the word of weapon was the insecticide. And the villain is Professor Plum. Mm. Uh -huh, yeah. Professor Plum. A slightly more popular choice, but we move on now to round one, where our studio sleuths can actually cross-examine all six suspects. And do remember at this stage that only the murderer can lie. All the others must be telling the truth. So, Lisa and Kevin, would you please start the cross-examination? Thank you. Miss Scarlett. Hello. Now, the first time we saw you on the morning of the murder, you were banging the gong and shouting murder. Yes, I just found the body. Yes. Can you tell me exactly what you were doing before you found the body? Yes. Um, after church, uh, Colonel Mustard insisted that we talk, and uh, I explained the ghastly situation with Stringer. Then Mrs. White asked me if I would fetch everyone for lunch, and that's when I um, found the body. Thank you very much. Yes, it sounds reasonably convincing. Jenny and Nigel, your <laughs> question, please. <laughs> Reverend Green, coming back from church, where you'd no doubt given a thumping great sermon. Indeed, I had. You, <laughs> you were talking to Mrs. White. What did you exactly mean when you said that Stringer wouldn't be with you for much longer? Well, after my thumping good service, I was talking to Colonel Mustard uh, about the situation, which none of us were very pleased about. We talked it over and decided, in fact, Colonel Mustard decided that he would actually run him off the, the estate that afternoon, and that's exactly what was going to happen. All right, let's move back to Lisa and Kevin. Your next question, please. Colonel Mustard, this time, you actually look very upset, <coughs> I didn't even say murderous even, when Mr. Stringer kept revealing more and more about the undercover operation of yours that went quite badly wrong. We'd like to know where were you and what were you doing on the morning of the murder? Well, I'd just come from a very upsetting conversation with Vivian in the drawing room. And then I went to see Mrs. Peacock in the study, wasn't it, darling? Study. Yeah. And uh, we tried to work out how we could get rid of this monster. And then we heard of his demise. Heard of his demise. I was sorry I wasn't there, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to uh, yeah. Nigel and Jenny. OK, uh, Professor Plum, um, <laughs> when you were having your disagreement with Stringer, um, you were in the library and you picked up a bottle of wine and you looked at it, did you take a drink from it? No, I, I was about to take a drink from it and then I caught sight of the label and of course realised that Stringer had an execrable taste in wine. <laughs> Wanting desperately to have a glass of wine, I went to the dining room in the hope that perhaps there might be something acceptable there. Well, he, he is a bit of a wine buff. All right, let's finally move back to uh, Lisa and uh, Kevin. Mrs Peacock, can you uh, tell us please, what, what, what was a gun doing in your desk drawer in the study? It's not an everyday household thing, is it? No. No, it's not at all. Um, when my husband, Jack Peacock, died many years ago, I was alone in the house. Well, I was alone, three ladies were alone in the house. And um, it was actually Mike, Colonel Mustard, that 
on one of my birthdays, he bought me that gun. And I do feel that it, there is a sense of protection in our house by dint of the fact that I have it there. Just protection. And uh, the last cross-examination question, please, again from uh, Nigel. Mrs. White, you hinted, or it was hinted by Stringer, that you'd had an affair with the Reverend Green. Would you kill for love? Oh. <laughs> please. Well, I can't believe that's a serious inquiry to find out who killed your colleague, Mr. Dempster. Simply looking for salacious gossip, as far as I can see. So I'm sorry, Mrs. White, I have to step in here. Would you kill for love? A woman of my age has no need to kill for love. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've now heard from each of our six suspects, so now our studio detectives here must make their deduction. Now, the best thing, of course, for them to do is to make a completely correct one, three out of three. But the second best thing for them to do is to get all three wrong, none out of three, because that way we can actually eliminate a room, a weapon, and a suspect from these inquiries. So, uh, Lisa and Kevin, I want you to tell me in which room David Stringer was killed, what weapon was used to kill him, and, of course, who the murderer was. We think the murder was committed in the kitchen, mm. With a paper knife, and I'm afraid we still think it still was Miss Scarlet. Scarlet. Scarlet's still in the frame for you. Now, why, why, do you <laughs> why do you think that? Well, actually, we didn't find her very um, convincing when she came to announce the murder. We think she was actually covering up yes. that she had done it. Let's move across to Jenny and Nigel. Jenny seemed to point out that, that Miss Scarlet was coming out of the billiard room, so we'd like to change from our gut reaction. Yes, from mm. our little map we've got here. Billiard direct, room, yes. but you still think, don't you? Insecticide. And therefore, it must be... Professor Plum. OK. <laughs> just, just tell me why, why you still think Professor Plum's the guilty man. Well, Jenny points out, you see, this is women's intuition. She says that he's got the most to lose from this appalling, blackmailing journalist. All right, thank you both very much indeed. Let's just now go back to uh, Lisa and Kevin and remind ourselves of your uh, deductions. You felt that the room where the murder was committed was the kitchen. It was done with a paper knife and that Miss Scarlet is the killer. Well, I have to tell you, you're completely wrong on all three counts. <laughs> and let's just recap again on what Jenny and Nigel deduced at this stage. They think the murder was committed in the billiard room. The weapon, such as it is, was the insecticide and that Professor Plum is the guilty man. I can tell you at this stage that you have two out of three of your guesses right. So, Jenny and Nigel are getting close, but we've also made an elimination. We can now definitely rule out the kitchen, the paper knife, and, of course, Miss Scarlet. Miss Scarlet, I'm glad to say you are now completely in the clear. And there we have to leave our investigation for a few moments, but we will be back to find out who killed David Stringer. So please join us after the break. Thank you very much. Welcome back. Now, journalist David Stringer has been murdered. We're trying to find out who killed him, with which weapon, and in which room at Arlington Grange. Now, if you're trying to solve the case at home, here's a reminder of what we've discovered so far. We've eliminated the kitchen, the paper knife, and, of course, Miss Scarlet from our inquiries, but there are still five possible rooms, five possible murder weapons, and, of course, five possible suspects. Well, in just a moment, our studio detectives will continue to cross-examine the suspects and, of course, the witness. But first of all, some very important new evidence has come to light. We're going to start outside Stringer's bedroom. Oh, I noticed some uh, aphids on the roses. Oh. To tell the truth, I'm trying to evade that damn journalist. Oh, troublemaker. I tried to warn Mrs. Peacock about it. I don't want to talk about it. If you'll excuse me, I've got work to do. Photographs! Well, it was over a year ago. How can you be so stupid? Well, that's why I had to go to his room. Oh, we're gonna go kill him! <laughs> oh, dear girl. Look, we're both grown ups, you and I. Hey, I'm not exactly spotless myself. <laughs> hmm? But he'll pay for it. I'll deal with him, my dear. Well, what do you think at home? Incriminating behaviour? 
or innocent actions? Well, here in round two, our studio sleuths can put this extra evidence to use as they cross-examine any suspect or witness, of course, that they wish. Each question and answer must be followed immediately by a deduction. So we're going to start straight away with Lisa and Kevin. Yeah, Professor Plom, when you left the kitchen on the morning of the murder, did you take anything with you? Not that I remember. I, the stringer was rather overpowering. I, was just, I think I was counting the, the washing up liquid or something like that, and I noticed there was a bottle of Bovril in there. No, I didn't take anything. <laughs> Not a thing? Not a thing. He says you left empty-handed. Would you like to make a deduction, please? <clears throat> Actually, yes. I think we've changed our minds quite dramatically. We've had a rethink. Mainly, <laughs> mainly because we got the other lot totally wrong. Absolutely. Um, we, think the, uh, <laughs> we think the murder happened in the dining room. Mm -hmm. We think the murder weapon was the insecticide. And we go along with Nigel and Jenny, we think the murderer is Professor Plum. Because he looks very sinister. Right? Well, let's just remind ourselves. Lisa and Kevin, you said the dining room, the insecticide and Professor Plum. And I can tell you at this stage that two out of those three deductions are correct. Well done. Thank you. Hello. Nigel and Jenny. <laughs> yes. Got a question for Mrs White. When you were in the kitchen with Professor Plum mm -hmm. and he was fiddling around in the cupboards, did you notice where the bottle of wine was? Which bottle of wine? Well, in an earlier shot, we saw that the wine and the insecticide were appealingly close together. I don't have any memory of a bottle of wine. I'm, I mean, that man had bottles of wine everywhere. I'm <laughs> glad someone stopped him before he drank the house. But I, quite frankly, <laughs> but I don't remember a bottle of wine in the kitchen. You really can't remember? No, oh, I'm sorry, I can't. Well, despite that negative answer, you still have to make a deduction. Have a go. I think Jenny's cottoned on to the actual modus operandi of the murder. Yes. Library. The murder potion was the insecticide and the murderer was Professor Plum. Yeah. Well, that's a very interesting set of deductions. Can I just ask you why you've made them? Well, because the last place we saw the bottle of wine was in the library. Mm -hmm. um, and we presume that uh, Stringer just nipped back for a quick, quick drink on the sly, because journalists do drink a lot. I'm afraid they do. <laughs> You say you think he poisoned the bottle. Well, I can tell you that it was the library, and it was the insecticide, and it was Professor Plum. Yes, I killed him. He came here so full of conceit, not looking for the truth. He would lie, cheat, and threaten for a lurid headline. He would destroy honourable lives for the sake of one moment's titillation for his readers. He upset us all, and he blackmailed me. It is true that a project I worked on had been used without adequate safeguards, regrettable, but Stringer was going to ruin my reputation. So I decided to poison his wine. I knew he'd be back for the bottle. What was it? Oh, a cocktail of insecticides. It seemed somehow appropriate. So, it was Professor Plum who murdered David Stringer in the library with the insecticide. My apologies have to go to the other five. You're all, of course, cleared of suspicion and free to leave this place without a stain on your character. And, of course, our congratulations go to Jenny and Nigel, who played a wonderful game. <laughs> and, of course, commiserations to Lisa and Kevin. Oh, you did very well, but you just not well enough. <laughs> and well done for playing Cluedo. Thank you. Right, well, I hope uh, you've enjoyed playing armchair detective this evening. If you'd like to win a murder mystery weekend, then please stand by for details of our special telephone competition coming up in a second. We'll be back, of course, next week with another murder to solve. But for now, from all of us here on Cluedo, it's a very good night to you. Good night. <laughs> to enter our special competition, phone 0891 606 707. The lines are open until midnight Tuesday. Just answer a simple question based on tonight's programme and you could win a murder mystery weekend for two. The answer to last week's competition was C. The incriminating piece of evidence that Mrs White attempts to conceal are her own footprints from the wet wax. And last week's winner was Miss Rahila Nazia from Birmingham. <laughs>